Seemingly, we learn something new about coronavirus every day. Researchers around the world continue to try to understand its pathogenesis. Now we're learning from a new study in microbiology that there may be two primary strains of the novel cor coronavirus. There's an S-type and an L-type. Our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is here to explain more. So let's first talk about what that means. A multiple, there are multiple strains of the virus. Uh, what does that mean and how do we understand what it, what it might mean going towards a cure? So Tom, we do know that viruses, particularly the coronavirus, every time they replicate, they can be prone to mutations. And this virus has shown us in the past that it can mutate multiple times. So it went from the bat, which was the original host, to an intermediary animal, which we think is an animal called a pangolin, and then it came to humans. And what we think is that when it first came to humans in December, it was the S type of the coronavirus. Now, what we've discovered since then is that there's also another type called the L type, which has some genetic differences from the S type. It's unclear if S turned into L or if the pangolin gave us both S and L. We're still exploring those, but we do know that the two different types have different clinical behaviors. They behave differently. All right, let, let's go back one second. I, I'm fascinated about the S type and the L type, but you and I were just texting about the pangolin because this is an animal in the middle that you yeah. and I had never heard of. Uh, so tell us how this becomes the okay. intermediary, what it is, and, and you found out this is an animal that's heavily trafficked. Exactly right. So this animal is the most trafficked animal across Asia, actually, and it's used for both food purposes and medicinal purposes. And the way that we know that it was likely the intermediary animal is based on the genetic sequencing. So genetic signature tells us that it came through the pangolin before it got to humans. And we had been scratching our heads for quite some time trying to figure out which the intermediary animal was, but it seems more and more likely that this is the one. All right, viewers, that's your homework. Google pangolin, learn about that. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Coley, tell us about uh, these two strains. Do we know much about the differences between them? Like, is one more aggressive than the other? So the L strain is more common than the S strain. So about 70% of the cases that we're seeing are the L strain, 30% are the S strain. The S strain is the older type, and the L strain is the one that actually spreads more quickly. Now, what we don't know is whether this means that it's actually going to cause a more serious illness. So it, just because it spreads quickly doesn't mean it necessarily makes you sicker. It just means you're more likely to get infected with the L strain, and that's why it's also more common. We're still trying to figure out why it is that some people are completely without symptoms and some people are ending up in the ICU or dying from this disease. Is it the strain of the virus? Is it the dose of the virus? Is it the body's response or all of the above? So we're not clear on that part yet. What does this do as far as trying to develop a vaccine? Does this make it a more difficult and more flexible or, or even a moving target? Or is, or is it immaterial really as far as developing the vaccine we're hoping to find? You know, a really important question, because if it is a moving target, it'll make vaccine development much more challenging if the virus keeps mutating. But there is good news here, and it seems like even though there's minor changes between the genetic signatures of these two strains, they're so largely overlapping that it's probably not going to affect vaccine development or the success of a vaccine, which will likely work on both strains. And uh, obviously, as we as we watch this uh, continue to evolve, uh, we've been talking a little bit about the difference between its impact on men and women in different parts of the world as well. Yeah, another very interesting observation that's uh, um, emerged from the data. So in China, men were significantly more likely to die from the disease than women. And initially, scientists thought that was because men are more likely to smoke and smoking is a risk factor for dying from this disease. But more recently, we're actually learning that there, the ACE2 receptor, which is the one, the doorway that the virus uses to get into the lungs, is actually expressed on the X chromosome. So women actually have you know, different amount of copies of it compared to men because they have two X chromosomes compared to men who only have one. So we're wondering if that may attribute the difference. Well, it's nice every day that you teach us more about it, keep us uh, well informed, and together we can all learn more about the pangolin and, uh, and go from there. Uh, Pilots, good to see you, and thanks again for all your help. We'll talk to you soon.